Hi again. Um, what uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to continue to look at some of the um, some of the directives uh, and what changes we can do with them. Uh, the directive we're going to look at this time is the error log directive. Uh, so again, we're going to start off in the same spot we were last time, and uh, we're going to take a look at our HTTP config file. So the first thing we'll notice for our um, our thing is that our error log folder is defined as uh, logs <coughs> slash error log. Now we can pretty much put that what it, wherever we want it to go, um, but we need to make sure that that's the file that it goes in. I I'm just going to make a change to that now in a moment. Again, I need to be the super user. Uh, just as a note to any of you guys that are looking at this video, I've actually restored, and you've watched a previous video to me changing things, I'm always restoring my, uh, my folder or my HTTP config file back to its original state after I, uh, I do each of these so that you can see them one at a time. So, um, I need to switch to the super user. Now, right now, now remember, last time we were changing the uh, the document root, uh, but that was a folder. This time we're actually changing the error log file. So, as you can see, the error log file is stored in logs error log. Um, the default log folder for our uh, our particular configuration is um, slash var slash logs slash http and then this will be kind of added on to that so it'll be um, slash error log. Uh, so that logs here means slash var slash log slash http. Um, so we're going to make a change to this and what we're going to do is we're going to make it just new error log. Again we're not going to restart the server right away so we can see what's going on. Um, so I quickly make that change. Right now you can see that I do have an error log file and I have an access log file um, in this particular folder. Let's just take a look at the top of it. So not a lot of stuff or there's a lot of detail, but not a lot of kind of obviously interesting stuff uh, can you see from here. What you can see is the some of the different error codes and how they actually get pulled up as you look through. I'm gonna take a look at the tail of the uh, of the file instead of the head of the file. It always adds to the very end of the file. So if you want to see what your last error was, you just do. You just have to look at the very end of the file, and the tail command will let me do that really quickly. Um, so I got an index is forbidden on var www.html, uh, and then I have another directive that kind of lets me show some stuff. Let, let's take a look at what happens when we actually cause an error. So if I go to localhost my file we'll get now our test page. If I come back over to my log file and do my tail, I shouldn't get much in the way of an error. So the last date for the previous one was uh, 1038 and 10 seconds. This one is uh, 1044 and it's just saying that I can't find my uh, my fav icon. That's the little icon that you see appear up, at, up in this. There's not one set up on this server so Every time we go to the page, we're going to get that particular error. But let's get let's create a different error. Let's say we're going to go for my file three. So now I get a broken link error. So if I come here, I do my tail again. You'll see that my file three, um, the file does not exist. It can't be found. So uh, that shows you that we are actually making some changes here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to 
just restart our web server. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to list this directory again. Right away you see that we have this new error log file. So let's take a look at what's in it. Again, we'll just take a look at the very end of it. And uh, all that's in it is a couple of little notices. If I go to a file that does exist on the web server, like our test page, I'll get the uh, the fav icon doesn't exist. If I go to a file that's not on our server, I'll see that I get that error to uh, to be shown in this file. Uh, this is a very useful thing for when you're trying to troubleshoot some things, uh, especially if you're doing some um, some development work with some frameworks or uh, or things that aren't quite obvious. It, it just gives you an extra spot to be able to check uh, to see why things are happening. Uh, it's also a good spot to take a look at every now and again to see if your uh, your computer's under some sort of an attack of people trying to find ways into it. Um, an example of that is there's a, a very common error block that you'll see appear in these that are uh, attacks on um, on IIS servers because uh, it, it's a string that they use to try to break into the IIS servers uh, and while it has no effect on the Apache server it does actually leave the commands that people are trying into your error logs. So uh, that's it for the error log. Remember anytime that you make a change to your HTTP config file you need to restart your uh, your web service otherwise the changes don't take and I got a couple more videos coming for you soon. Talk to you then.